You are listening to KSG Podcast. This is a short, crisp, concise, exam-oriented, edited editorial for civil services aspirants. In this podcast, we are going to talk about what is color blindness. Source for the content is the Indian Express. The Supreme Court has directed the Film and Television Institute of India, that is FTII, not to exclude candidates suffering from color blindness from its courses on filmmaking and editing and asked it to make changes to its curriculum instead. The court agreed with the conclusion of an expert committee that the color grading module of the editing course has no relevance or nexus with the role of a film editor. The court said that the conclusion of the committee shows a clear recommendation that all individuals will be allowed for all courses at FTII. FTII should make accommodation in its curriculum for candidates with color blindness and the color grading module in existing diploma and film editing course curriculum should be excluded or made elective. Earlier in March 2017, Bombay High Court had declined to provide relief to another student who had been denied admission by FTII after a medical test showed he was suffering from color blindness. The court had said, and I quote, We are of the view that the petitioner being a candidate suffering from disability of color blindness, he cannot claim admission in the course in question in which, according to the FTII rules framed by the expert body of the first respondent, he cannot be allowed, unquote. Now, what is color blindness? Color blindness, also known as color deficiency, is the inability to see colors in the normal way. Colorblind individuals often cannot distinguish between certain colors, usually greens and reds, and sometimes blues as well. Two types of cells in the retina detect light, the rods, which distinguish between light and dark, and the cones that detect color. There are three types of cones that see color, red, green and blue, and our brains use the information from these cells to perceive color. Color blindness can be the result of the absence of one or more of these cone cells or their failure to work properly. In a situation where all three cone cells are present but one of them is malfunctioning, mild color blindness may occur. Color blindness may be of different kinds and degrees. Mildly color blind people often see all colors properly only when the light is good. There are others who cannot tell one color apart from another no matter how good the light is. In the most severe kind of color blindness, vision is black and white. That is, everything appears as a shade of gray. This is not very common. Now, clarity usually is not affected. Color blindness generally affects both eyes and the condition remains roughly the same for as long as the individual is alive. Unless the color blindness is of the most severe kind, the sharpness or clarity of vision is not affected. Many people are so mildly color blind that they do not even realize that they have the condition. Color blindness cannot as yet be treated or reversed. However, it can be corrected to some extent by wearing special contact lenses or color filter glasses. There is some research that suggests gene replacement therapy can help modify the condition. Now, talking about how to detect the condition, in the case of a child, parents can notice the deficiency for the first time when the child is beginning to learn colors. The child may have difficulty in seeing colors or in recognizing the brightness of colors in ways that would be considered normal. The child may also show an inability to distinguish between shades of the same or similar colors. Parents and teachers often notice the child cannot tell between red and green and blue and yellow. Most colorblind people are born with the condition, that is, congenital color blindness, but some can develop it later in life. Congenital color vision deficiencies are usually passed on genetically. A problem with color vision that arises later in life could be the result of disease, trauma, or ingested toxins. If color blindness arises out of disease, one eye may be affected differently from the other, and the difficulty could worsen over time. Medical conditions that may increase the risk of getting color blindness include glaucoma, diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, alcoholism, leukemia, and sickle cell anemia. Who all are at risk? Men suffer from a higher incidence of color blindness than women. Around the world, every 10th male is estimated to have some form of color deficiency. Men of Northern European descent are considered to be especially vulnerable. With regard to India, the Supreme Court in the FTII case quoted from the report of the expert committee, and I quote, Estimated 8% of male population and less than 1% female population have red and green color deficiency being the most common form of color blindness, unquote. Now, what you can or cannot do? Color blindness impairs in some ways the ability to do certain kinds of jobs, such as being a pilot or joining the armed forces. However, whether you can or cannot do these jobs often depends on the severity of the color blindness and the rules in place in different jurisdictions. In June 2020, India's Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways amended the Central Motor Vehicle Rules 1989 to enable citizens with mild to medium color blindness to obtain a driver's license. 
The decision was taken after the ministry received representations that uh, colorblind citizens are not able to get driver's license because restrictions specified in the requirements in the declaration about physical fitness or the medical certificate make it difficult. Now, this according to a government release. The release noted that medical experts had recommended that mild to medium colorblind citizens should be allowed to drive and that restrictions should be put only on the severely colorblind citizens. The release said that this was allowed in other parts of the world. So that's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. To join KSJ in the courses and to crack the ice exam, visit ksjindia.com. You can also get a PDF of this podcast on ksjindia.com. Thanks for listening.